Hello, everybody. Welcome to Trader Merlin Show. It is your Thursday edition, winding down our final month of September, and actually the first day of October. Some nice numbers out there and a lot of market volatility. And lo and behold, we might even have some gaps out there today. Uh, there was questions coming through chat yesterday about my Facebook position. I think that might have been you, Tom, or Big Ed was asking about it. And I went, you know what? Today, I actually stopped that on that Facebook. 267 was my stop loss. I was really hoping we would have held that high. But we didn't, so there you go. You guys have been asking about the Facebook out of that one. Still in short on my Akamai, though, so we're doing okay there. Uh, hello, Sam, Dana, Patrick, Batista, Tom, Jorge, Richard, Gino, and many, many others. I'm sure there'll be many more here as we finish up today. All right, as you guys can see from the graphic here, I got how to trade gaps with John Rowland. The topic came up because I was talking to John the other day and I said, hey, you, you want to come back on the show? He says, I'd love to, and I want to talk about gaps. So without much further ado, Mr. John Rowland. How you doing, my friend? How you doing, sir? Yeah, hello, Mr. Acavano. I believe that was the line to use in the in the movie. There, how you been, John? Good. Been very well. Been really busy with my new uh, uh, job at uh, BarChart.com. So I've been uh, doing a lot of uh, weekly webinars. So I've been really, be really busy. So um, I'm excited to be back to see my old friend Merlin, though. Yeah, well, I'm not only excited to have you on the show, I'm excited to have the topic because we've been talking about gaps on this program a little bit. I don't go too in-depth because I, sometimes I feel like it may actually be overwhelming to some people understanding gaps and gap creation. But you know what? Since I've got a seasoned floor trader veteran on here, let's overwhelm people. So where do you want to start with with the gap discussion today? Well, let's talk a little gap theory. First of all, you know, when we look about gaps, you know, on a chart, what, what does that represent? Well, that represents the greatest inbounds between buyers and sellers. And if we think about uh, price, right, price is just a record of uh, a transaction between buyers and sellers. And so that when price gaps up or down, uh, we have no transactions between buyers and sellers, which means that there is a void of a buyer or a seller. For instance, on the way on the gap down, that means that there's no buyers, and then the way on the gap, the gap up, that means n there's no sellers. So th that alone is telling us a very unique story, and that when price gaps up, means that there's still probably buyers from the point where price went up, but there's no sellers, and so that's why price gaps up. And the other theory about gaps is that when price returns to the gap it's acts like a magnet and it it pulls uh, price into that void but when price returns to the gap or falls through the gap these are great entries for us for either stocks or futures markets where those buyers were left behind and, and then usually what happens is price fills the gap and then uh, shoots away so those two concepts the equation of price and uh, that gaps act like magnets to pull price in to give us some good trading setups is the theory of gaps. Right. So for me, I think it's important that people understand that when you're looking at a gap, um, many times you try to overcomplicate the situation, meaning you're going to look at that and go, well, why did that happen? It has to happen for X, Y, and Z. Don't. Don't waste your time with that. It happened, period. And you got to know that if something went from $5 to $6 overnight, obviously that's a 20% increase in value. Something caused that. I don't care whether it was news release, earnings statements, you know, a tweet, tweet from the president, it doesn't matter. There was an imbalance there that caused that to shift. Now, it's not saying that it's guaranteed that when it comes back down to that $5 market, those buyers will still be there. But it's a logical point to assume that buyers will be there because of what happened in the past. I think that's if we try to break it to layman's terms, that would probably help people understand it better. Yeah, exactly. So when we think about gaps in terms of the catalyst, like you said, it could be a variety of things. But what, as traders, what we need to do is don't worry about what caused the gap. I mean, obviously, you probably want to try to investigate that. But let's think about gaps as it relates to our trend and that what you'll discover, and hopefully I'll be able to prove this to you, is that like in supply and demand in what you would call your you know, your structures that you look in candlesticks, there is a sequentality of gaps, just like we see a sequentality in supply and demand zones. And that if you understand your trend and you understand gaps and you understand how that gap relates to your trend, well, you can 
get into a trade very early, the beginning of a new trend, and ride that trend out, and the market will literally tell you when to get out. Yep, and and getting out, as we know, as G.I. Joe would say, is half the battle. We've got to get the other half in there, too. Um, okay, let's go to the different types, because as we go through the industry, you've got inside, outside, breakaway, runaway, island reversal, stretch gaps. I mean, you can come up and name almost anything out there with a gap. So I think that you could probably do a good job explaining kind of the, the main pieces that we need to focus on, because each one of those has their own strength and weakness, like inside gaps and outside gaps. So where do we start there? Okay, so let's let's start with outside gaps. Outside gaps are where price uh, opens up outside of the previous day's range. And usually these are ones that are based on some kind of catalyst of fundamental analysis or uh, a Fed report or earnings or something to that effect. Um, so when we look at the difference, there is a difference between equities and futures. So in equities, because we have a short period of time that we can actually trade stocks, you know, six and a half hours. Uh, you get a lot of pent up supply and demand or pent up buyers and sellers. And so um, outside gaps um, are more common in uh, the stock market. When they happen in the futures markets, because we have access to futures markets, you know, literally, you know, 23 hours a day, there are a lot more si si uh, uh, significant. But we don't see a lot of outside gaps inside of the futures markets. We do, but mm -hmm. it's not as many as we see. Usually, usually like Sunday night when the rollover happens. Yeah, or or if you have an inventory report or something of that effect. Mm -hmm. uh, the opposite, though, inside gaps um, are really common in futures markets, and they're really great day trading setups because usually what happens is an inside gap is a gap that is inside of the previous day's trading range and that when price returns to that gap, and if that gap is in concert with our trend, boy, those are great day trade setups, especially in the futures market. So if you allow me, I'd like to show a couple of charts, uh, first making that distinction of outside gaps for equities, and then we'll look at inside gaps towards futures What markets. do you think, audience? Should we allow them to go to the gaps? I, I think we'll let you do it, John. Go for it. Uh, we'll let you bring up your, your screen here, and I'll, I'll, as soon as you have it shared, I'll share it with the viewers. Um, I'm, I, for one, guys, you know, I'm a pretty big fan of gaps. I think gaps are a huge magnet towards price, but there are, it's funny, there's certain types of gaps where people will chase gaps, and uh, all right, there you go. So he's got his screen up. I will share that with you guys so you can see. This is from barchart.com where uh, John's been working. So uh, what, what do we, walk us through what you got here. Okay, so uh, just a reference here. This is uh, Scott's Miracle Grow. I know, that, I think that's one of those in your portfolio, isn't it? Which one? I don't know. Maybe not. Wait, wait, Scott's wait. Miracle Grow? Yeah. No, not of mine. My, my growing days are long gone, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a bad joke. I'm sorry. Actually, All I right, do so. have a pretty, you know, you'd be surprised. I actually pretty have a pretty robust garden. So, you know, but but not the, not the, the, uh, the medicinal type. It's uh, unless peaches and avocados and tomatoes and bell peppers are, are, you know, the bad stuff. Anyway, there we go. That's my miracle grow. Right. Okay. All right. So let's think about a gap. It's the imbalance between buyers and sellers. So for instance, here, uh, what, what we see here is we see a dominant downtrend, right? We see price moving in one direction. Matter of fact, we see a gap where price falls away, right? Lack of buyers is what created that gap. And notice that price did return to that origin of where that sell-off was. That would have been a great trade. But let's look at the end of this cycle, this down cycle. Here we see price gaps up, and you can see that this is our closing price of our green candle, and this is the opening price of our next green candle. And this gap is outside of the previous day's candle, and that is significant in terms of this imbalance. Now, let's think about this logically. If we were in a dominant downtrend like we see here, where we believe sellers are greater than buyers, right, then would the market be allowed to gap up? No, nope, the market gaps up because of lack of selling. So what this is telling us is that the selling is over and that maybe we are going to be beginning a new trend. We don't know yet, but certainly the gap is a huge clue that this trend is about to reverse. Now. Here we see a little basing action, right? And then we get another outside gap. 
Now, notice now this gap is above this gap. This trend is in control now. And this outside gap confirmed our trend. So here again, at this point, that would be a signal for us that we could take that trade as it goes gap and go kind of thing mm -hmm. right but we also could wait patiently to see if price uh, returns uh, to that gap now a lot of times it doesn't and then you see a couple more outside gaps right now look at this little teeny gap here sometimes folks ask me you know is the size of the gap important and size doesn't matter in this case um, when price returned to that gap notice that here on our correction of our trend analysis here's our impulse here's our correction and that when it corrected it came right back to that gap and then it continued again right our trend is in control and then here's another outside gap right here's our correction that was our impulse correction and then our trend continued now what happens at the end of our trend, right? The bend at the end, right? You know, that analogy that a lot of traders know. Here we have a gap down. If this trend was in control, would the market be able to gap down? No, it wouldn't. And this outside gap has now signaled to us that this trend is over. And look what happened. Mm -hmm. So what we see here is that gaps in equities tell a very specific story and that there's a cycle of gaps very similar to where we see a cycle of supply and demand zones a drop based rallies uh, rally based rallies rally based drops drop based drops that cycle is very similar uh, in the gap theory so we have a reversal gap then we have a confirmation gap that breaks above a pivot right a swing high swing high confirmation affirmation and that at the end of the run you get that reversal gap mm -hmm. and I'm telling you that this plays out in the equity markets uh, literally in almost every market every stock every stock uh, I'm curious in the viewers out there if you guys want type in how are you trading gaps or if there a specific one you're looking for like outside gap inside gap my personal favorite is the one that John actually has there at the top which is they're rare to see. You don't see them as often, but when you do, they, they can be very powerful. And that's that exhaustion gap, which can lead up into, uh, in that specific example he's got highlighted, is an island reversal. For those that don't know, if you were to go across the high of the candle just before that gap, basically you have this, this space um, between that candle and the two that are circled in whatever color that oval is that you got there. What color is that thing? Pink? It's like a pinky red. Pinky good. I'm colorblind. Thanks for that one. Um, his pinky reds oval right there, those two bars are completely separated from price, right? Those, they don't touch anything. So that's an island reversal, which, you know, it's it's hard to say you would catch that red candle that John's got his cursor on right now. You, you probably wouldn't, right? You just kind of... Um, you wait for it to come back down, but that's a great sign that it's exhausted itself when you have that gap down the next day and an aggressive red candle sell-off. If you were to have that exhaustion gap or island reversal, those two candles with really high volume, that's another factor where you can start to uh, almost use as an odds enhancer to uh, give more power to people buying it at the end of a big run and it's just finally exhausted. It's that point where everybody's on board and even though it may be a great company or stock or commodity, it doesn't matter, there's not a lot of buyers to push it back up. So you get this kind of switch from everybody on board to people jumping off board, which is what you see here on this chart on Scott's Miracle Grill. Right, right, right. And again, after our outside gaps, out of our day trading setups, so, you know, let me kind of make this a little bit bigger for you. Um, as the group says, size matters. So yeah, the, the big, yeah, the big exactly, charts works good exactly. here for us viewers at home. Yep. <laughs> All right, so here we see a gap, right? This is a very small gap. Here's our closing price. Here's our opening price, right? We've already determined that this uptrend is over. Now we're in a downtrend. Like you said, this would be a difficult short to take because it's already fallen away. We're waiting for either to come back and fill this gap. Now, it didn't come back and fill this gap. But inside of this little gap right here, price 
open lower and at some point during the day you can see there's a little teeny tail there right a little wick that came back and filled that gap that price returned uh, to the closing price of the previous day and then what did price do mm -hmm. just fell out of bed again it did it again here as well right so inside gaps with our trend are great day trading setups okay um, a couple questions here. Uh, Richard says, John, did you state that the inside gap is inside the trend? No, inside of the previous day's uh, trading range. In other words, we're going to look at the high and low of yesterday, and the gap will be between the closing price of yesterday and the opening price of today. So uh, here is um, the T-bond, and this is a trade that I got and I want to kind of point it out to you. So let me make this nice and big so you can see it. And, woo, not that big. So when I slide it back up, I do want to reference here this time, uh, 7.30 a.m. And which, which time zone? This is central time. Okay. Um, you can see CBOT central time. So, so, Mark, so basically time. the market open, uh, you're looking at basically. Excellent. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> So here is a gap. Now, think about this. I'm in a 30-minute time frame here, and our market is really open, right? Our bond market opens at 6 o'clock Eastern time the night before. But in the opening of the regular trading hours, right, here we had an imbalance, right? Sellers came in on the opening of the bond market and knocked the market out of balance. And this candle closed right there, and the next candle open there that's a gap and that gap did get filled this gap is inside of the range of today right so we can see inside gaps inside of the same day as well that would be a great day trading setup and you will see a lot more of these um, in futures markets than you do in um, the stock market because the stock market has a lot more outside gaps mm -hmm. Is there, uh, when you're looking at inside versus outside gaps, is there any, I don't want to say benefit to either one. Like I I personally prefer outside gaps because I feel there's much more emotion on that gap. You know, if you, if an inside gap, guys, is where you're, you're opening up inside the previous day's range, and that might be called an inside day um, if it's a daily chart, but I like the outside gaps because it, to me there's just more emotion in it. Do you have a preference, John? No, again, I think in my personal trading, I tend to look at outside gaps in the equities markets and then look for inside gaps in the futures markets. Um, but I think both of them do give great trading opportunities. But I love the word you use there, emotion, right? And here's Tesla. I mean, everybody's got Tesla, right? Everybody has, and, you know, a few weeks ago, you know, when Tesla started coming out, you know, everybody, you know, all the Robin Hoods were like jumping off the, you know, the, the, the roof and all that and suicide watch and everything. But here's that emotion, right? There's that emotional candle, right? That big range. But notice what happened is price returned to the gap of the impulse that broke a pivot high. Textbook. Yeah. Textbook. Right? I mean, that's, there's that emotion, right? Everybody's, everybody, oh, I'm getting out of my Tesla. I'm getting out. I'm throwing away, you know, throw away the baby with the bathwater, all that. And boom, that would have been a great uh, a trading opportunity for somebody to come back uh, in, into, that, into Tesla when everybody else was selling, right? Mm -hmm. here's, a, here's a splitting hairs kind of question. Um, ask Dr. Bonnie. Okay. says uh, are you including wicks on inside gaps and, and you know this is especially when I do courses on candle six this is a an area of contention so do, are you using the wicks on your inside gaps yeah I mean there's this you know gap theorists they talk about something called a gap fill and um, so Bonnie so think about gap fill here's your wick down and here's your wick up right so here's our inside gap where we have a wick and if price comes back and touches the wick that would technically be a gap fill but when I'm doing inside gaps what I will look for is where price returns to the closing price imagine that's the closing price we can't and the see wick you, you got your back. screen up so you can't see your hand I can see your hand gestures but they can't <laughs> 
Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I was wondering whether that was PG too. I was like, wait, which finger? Be careful, everybody. <laughs> yeah. So when price returns to the closing price, that would be what is called a close the gap. So for inside gaps, I will set my entry on the close of the previous candle and hope that the wick comes back to it. Now, if it comes and fills it, you know, wick to wick, touch wick to wick, then and I miss that opportunity because it didn't close the gap, what I would do is, Bonnie, is I would take the first structure entry, drop base drop or rally base rally, where price breaks above or below uh, a recent swing or pivot high or low. Does that, does that make sense, Marlon? Yeah, I mean, it's it'd be nice if we had some visuals. It's a little bit hard to hear with theater of the mind, but... Um... Yeah, well, I, let me see if I can give you... Um, a good example. I'm sure you've got some sitting there. J.P. Morgan Chase, who just paid a what uh, billion dollar fine for uh, messing with commodity markets, huh? I love that. Ah, uh, well, listen. But they no. didn't do anything wrong. But they just paid nine hundred and something million dollars. But they didn't do anything wrong. Didn't admit to anything doing wrong, right? It's like that line. Remember in trades trading places when they go to the recruiting office and the guy, the recruiter goes, "Have you ever been convicted of a felony?" And they looked at each other and they go, "Convicted? No." <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see some so, visuals yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. So here is our range. Of, this is a daily chart. Here's our high and low from the previous day, and here is our gap. Right? There's our gap, and here's the wick that comes back to the close of the previous day. So this would be a closed gap, right? Mm -hmm. Now, could we have, for instance here, right, this, here's a gap, right, that came back, the wick came back, but it didn't close the gap, but it certainly did fill the gap because this wick to wick. So Bonnie, on this one, you know, you would, this is a daily candle, but you could go to maybe a trend time frame or intermediate time frame and look for that first structure that um, would be a confirmation of the trend that you believe that that, that inside gap represents. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Big Ab, you said, huh? I, I'm hoping that this illustration that he did right here kind of clarifies that because you have this this big you know this big candle here, and then it gap down still within the range of that big candle, and then the tail came up and closed that gap. So that would be uh, including that gap as as Dr. Bonnie was asking about. Yes, you do include those as gap fills. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And what's kind of really cool is, you know, the again, the power of the gap, that imbalance. Notice that price did come back a second time and close the gap. It, you know, the gap was already closed, but it came right back to the same value and then, you know, never looked back, you know. So, uh, so great question. But uh, for inside gaps, I try to find closings for my entry. I know that sounds kind of weird, but yeah, the closings for my entries. But for outside gaps... You know, um, let me give you another example of outside gaps. So, I mean, here's Apple, right? And, you know, everybody loves Apple, right? No, so, I hate Apple. <laughs> 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 nope, I'm so not going to throw that. It's like, you know, it's so funny because Larry Jacobson was talking on the show years ago, actually, maybe a year ago, and he goes, Everybody likes Priuses, right? I'm like, no, they look like suppositories on wheels. I'm not a Prius fan. You know, don't lump me into that category. I don't like Apple. I don't like Priuses. Sorry, the Prius holders out there, but but that's it. That's my rant. <laughs> Apple, go ahead. Go okay. with the outside gaps. Okay. All right. So again, we talk about outside gaps. The catalyst could be uh, a news report or something. So this gap was when Apple uh, announced that it was going to have a four. What was it a four for one split? Yep. four for one split, right? Yep. Right. And boom, that sent the market running. So how would we trade an outside gap that breaks a significant swing high? Now this swing high was very significant. This was the ATH, the all time high. And you know, you you can't make new highs without breaking old highs, right? So uh, here we got that outside gap. Now notice that we never got a retracement because you know the imbalance is really accelerating here so what can we do well what we could do is when we get an outside gap these kinds we'll just use this candle as our risk we'll set our stop at the bottom of this candle we would set our stop at the bottom of this candle we'd set our stop at the bottom of this candle. And this one did come back and fill this gap by the way um, 
uh, again, where it opens up and just shoots away. If that's what you want to do, you want to you know you want to chase price. But as long as it continues to take out highs, then your trend is in control and yep. you're you're all good. Now notice that here's this little orange box here. Now one of the cool features that a bar chart does in their charts is uh, you can come down here and look at announcements and dividends and uh, splits and all kinds of other cool features that they have and this is the actual date of the split right and which is that old adage in the in the equities markets you know you buy the rumor and you sell the news and as soon, right. as, the, as, soon as Apple split well, what happened we had an outside gap right not only that but you know, for you candlestick traders, I mean, what is this? It's a giant engulfing candle, right? Monster, yeah. I mean, that is a huge sign of price reversal. And then you got an outside gap, which would have told you that this trend is over, but also would have given you an opportunity to sell this market. Again, this would be a difficult short to take, right? But, you know, here's your first drop base drop, and then here's your retracement right there. So, again, you could have gotten into this or gotten out of your Apple stock, at Merlin, yeah. at around <laughs> one twenty fifty. Even though, you know, it you probably should have gotten out, you know, up here, you know. But sure, um, um, you know, it's uh, funny you, you've mentioned what that little word, uh, the little S was there. I think to me that's the that's the the four letter word that retail investors are screaming as this thing starts to fall apart. They're going, "Oh shit!" You know, it's it's dying on me. Or, or just the software putting in a sell signal on you automatically because, as we've seen historically, once something actually does do the official split, there's usually a sell-off. So these are some predictable patterns. Um, as you keep it on this chart here, I do want to alert people to something that uh, can be very dangerous here. I like outside gaps because normally, if you get like these these outside gaps that you see kind of uh, in the middle of the screen here, there's three the three first little circles. First one's uh, not that bad. The second one is a great outside gap where it goes right above that swing ATH, all-time high. Um, you got to be careful with an outside gap like this because when you see something gap up, especially if it's got high volume, to me that kind of is signifying that we could see um, you know, the retail investors pouring in here and see a correction, a pullback to fill that gap. That said, it does not have to fill that gap. And I'll give you guys a quick story here. Um, a trader friend of mine years ago, total gunslinger, um, no longer trading, I'll just tell you that. He found a stock that gapped up. It was a huge gap up and he said, it's gonna be a gap fill because we have this massive outside gap. And he loaded the boat, right? He bought several hundred thousand dollars worth of this stock. It went sideways for about two days and didn't fill the gap at all. That right away should be a warning sign. Next day, it gaps up massively again. What does he do? He shorts more. And then it jumped up again. Bottom line was in a period of about a week and a half, this guy lost about $800,000 trying to short a gap that he thought was going to fill. Just be careful that you don't get, you know, hang your hat on this thing and saying it has to fill, right? There's there's probability here. And um, I like to look at a, a breakaway or an outside gap like this, especially after a long uptrend on high volume as a potential that it could fill that gap. If it happens right into a supply zone, I'm feeling even more comfortable with it, but still there's no guarantee that it's going to fill that gap. So make sure you have your stop losses in place because you can get smoked on some of these gaps. There is a reason that Apple jumped from 90, 96 bucks up to you know, 104, 103. It happened because of an imbalance and that continued as we can see on this chart for many, many days. You'd be broke if you held that thing um, past the stop loss. Well, that's an excellent point, Marley. And so if we're looking at outside gaps, and you're selling into an outside gap that gaps up, well, you deserve to get punished because you're <laughs> stepping in front of the freight train. So, again, what I said in the beginning is we're going to use gaps in concert with our trend, and we're not going to fight the trend. We're going to go with the trend. And, yeah, could price, knowing that price comes into the gap mag that magnet concept and I do hear a lot of students oh well why don't I just sell it it falls into the gap no we're gonna take the trades with the gap with our trend not against the trend because like you said it could start to fall in there and all of a sudden just rip right through you so mm -hmm. great story and a a great learning lesson there. A great story for me, not so much for the guy, because that was a bankruptcy. That was a bankruptcy trade, right? That was the that was the Rio de Janeiro trade. <laughs> <laughs> what he's on his way to Rio to uh, so he, can, he can't pay his bills. Yeah, well. Yeah. So again, 
I'm actually Thanks for those that, for those that don't know what the Rio de Janeiro trade is. I'm doing a webinar with uh, Bob Dunn and Bill Henner on I think it's October. Oh shoot, what is today? It's I think it's October sixth. So I think it's next Tuesday. We're doing this webinar, uh, and we'll cover what the Rio de Janeiro trade is. That's it's one of those classic uh, floor trader stories. It's a, it's a good one. Uh, uh. So so let's go back to that cycle, right? Yep. Let's talk about that cycle, okay? And and this is kind of what you were saying, right? So. Yeah, this is a tough gap to take, but again, if this price action was in control, would the market be allowed to get gap up? No, it wouldn't. So that was your signal. Now I'm on guard, right? I'm saying, okay, something's about to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for that breakout above a swing high, and here we got that, and we also got the gap fill, the the inside outside gap gap fill. Now here, Dr. Bonnie, there you go. There's that wick over wick which is a gap fill but it didn't close the gap but that could have been an opportunity for you to come into this trade or that when it filled this gap and then it closed above that fill that could have been a signal for you to go long and then you would just use this candle as your stop but then again here's your could be your exhaustion and I love how you said that yeah this could be exhaustion if it came into a higher time frame supply drum roll please and look at that <laughs> here I'll right do the there. I'll do the background sound for you hallelujah hallelujah right right and <laughs> there you go right there and notice that price came back to an area where now it's hard to see here I know it's a small screen here let me see if I can widen it out a little bit for you but yeah, but that's that's perfectly validating what I just said. It's like that exhaustion gap. I mean, it, it was just running extremely strong. Hit to hit that area of supply right around thirty-five, and then just an about face. Perfect. But notice what do we have here? Yep, a little teeny gap, and another gap here, and another gap there. So a lot of supply above our head. And let me just. As you do that, let me explain for Patrick here real quick. Uh, Patrick says, what does exhaustion mean? Exhaustion generally means, if you look at this as a battle between buyers and sellers at all times, exhaustion means that the pendulum has swung from everybody being a buyer, or let's, let's do the other, everybody being a seller to everybody being a buyer. And at a certain point, everybody's already on board the train. There's no, it, it, theoretically, there's always more people. But in, in principle, you would say everybody who was going to buy this stock has already bought into it. Therefore, there's no move or no potential for buyers to push it up higher. It's exhaustion. Generally, that's you know a really strong extended move on high volume. When you see things like that, you know, obviously, as it comes into an area of supply, like you see here on Herman Miller's price chart, um, you know that's a good sign, an, an odds enhancer, if you will, that things may be about to reverse because when there's no one left to buy it, it's really got one direction to go, and that's going to be af uh, to the south side. Notice that Herman Miller went from 22 bucks to call it 35 dollars in about six days. I mean, that's a hell of a move. There's certainly yeah. some exhaustion in there. So there you go, Patrick. And there, and there you go, Merlin. Yeah. Then there's the volume to help Bob. validate that. And the biggest spike of volume, it looks to me like it's it's 20 times normal volume happen on the big extended candle into supply. I mean, this is like, does it get any better? I mean, of course, this is hindsight, guys, but that I wish I would have saw that one. That's beautiful. I mean, come on. That's awesome. So here's the great thing. Bar chart gives you a screener that tells you about gaps ups and gaps down, and then you would see that screener. You would have seen that gap on that day, and then you would have been able to jump into that chart and look for that technical analysis. Either look for the gap fill or in this case, look to where we could find a valid supply zone. So we, if we thought this was an exhaustion, and certainly this high volume would have clued you in that that, that could be an exhaustion, right, Marlon? Yep. yep. Right, right. Yep. So let me show you one more because I know you like to end a little early, but I know I don't um, like to end so early. I just like to I like to keep it under an hour. That's pretty much it. And Big Eb, I love your comment. We were talking about exhaustion. What does exhaustion mean? It's what happens when you watch the 2020 presidential debates. God, what an embarrassment that was. I don't care which part of the aisle you're on, uh, green or uh, red I'll or blue, what, that was embarrassing. I didn't even watch it, but uh, my good friend has been giving me the play-by-play -play highlights of it, and I could not care less about that debate. Anyway. Um, well, certainly as an American, I think it was very embarrassing. And the <laughs> other thing that I – again, I'm not a political person either. I'm a trader. But um, – I got to think that our the enemies of the United States were 
dancing in the streets. Oh yeah, we're watching that, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right? Well, I hope that right. someone was saying that Joe Rogan was gonna. Uh, there was a rumor that Joe Rogan would moderate the debates. I'd love to see that because like Joe Rogan would just jump up there and put old you know Biden or Trump in a headlock and be like, "I told you to shut up. I'm gonna submit you." <laughs> put put him in the octagon, right? Oh, right? let oh. Now that I would watch. That would be a great presidential debate. Okay, the the one who's standing at the end of it gets to uh, gets to be president. Right, exactly. Which would probably be the uh, Harris, right? <laughs> okay. So uh, here is uh, this is a, a a lithium company. It's a Canadian company, and you know it's kind of been in this range, just kind of languishing around, and nothing's really going on for you know a few weeks, and then. All of a sudden, we get an outside gap. Now, an outside gap that also does what? It takes away a recent pip high. That's our signal. Boom. Now we know that something's going on, that probably our, a new trend is going to start, and that that trend is going to be an uptrend, right? Yep. And then next day, we get another exhaustion gap, right? Uh, or not an exhaustion gap, an outside gap. Now, this one doesn't take out this high, but I like structure that pauses before it takes out a high. That gives me actually an opportunity to get in the market because sometimes it just runs away. And then, boom, right? Again, confirming our trend, right? Our trend, big candle, right? And another big candle, right? And then another candle, right? <laughs> trend is in control here. And then, watch this, another outside gap. What does this outside gap do? Takes out that. All right, wait, high. before you click forward, hold on, let me know what price are you at. Okay, you got one more candle. <laughs> you know what that's gonna happen. You, you just go you forward one more gonna... because I gotta I just gotta say something before you get to the, the, the big part. There's one more candle, right? I think, if I'm not mistaken there on this guy. Two more, but yes. I think it's go one ahead. more. Go one more. See so there's your there's the next candle, guys. So you look at the candle in this thing. At this point, I know what happens after the fact, but you got to tell yourself, you're not going to buy something like this, right? This is way too dangerous. However, it it's lithium. This is a lithium company, guys. This is a company that is, lithium is obviously key in batteries. And we knew that Elon Musk on battery day was going to make some big announcements on the 22nd of September. So you really should have been careful here. If you were ever thinking about shorting this bad boy, this again could be that case of buy the rumor, sell the news. And he did, in fact, say that they were looking at, you know, a lot of lithium uh, needed for this. Okay, now you can go forward. Because now you bring us to the 22nd um, of, I think it's a, it actually was halted for a couple days. It, uh, it was halted for a week. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but when it opened back up on the 28th, guys, that's just nuts. $55. But here's the thing. Let's review this. That's ridiculous. Right, this all started from an inside gap that changed our trend, and that's what I like to end with, Merlin. That's how powerful the powerful story that gaps can tell, and r realize that gaps are an imbalance between buyers and sellers, and only trade well. 95% of the time, trade with gaps or with your trend. Yep. You know, the, the trend makes it much easier. Obviously, those gaps are representations of emotion in the marketplace, uh, regardless of where that emotion came from. It doesn't have to be all of a sudden positive. We get uh, great breakdown gaps, as you saw in United Airlines and some of these airline stocks a while back. Um, tons of opportunity in those gaps. I, the, the, the cautionary note I have is you just have to be very, very careful when trading gaps. Again, there's emotion involved. When we get emotion, quite often we get these really big swings. Um, if you have something that's very gappy, one way that you could be trading those is, of course, you know, using options. I know some of the markets here may have very thinly traded, like PLL probably doesn't have much in the yeah. option market. Um, but you could be using options because the premiums are going to be very high in those. So you might be a seller of, of puts uh, if you want to buy at a lower prices, um, calls maybe. But you, you could use options as well to get in there. Um, because the premiums well, are going to be so high. Think about it. If you know your trend, right? Let's do some directional options, right? Yeah. I mean, you know your trend is in control. Let's do a debit uh, spread, right? That would be a, a great opportunity. Or um, here's one that I was kind of looking at uh, recently was here was that outside gap, and this is Devon Energies, mm -hmm. and um, this was a great cover call trade. You 
could have gotten into this trade where you had like a, I think it was a nine dollar strike and you set your target at you know ten dollars or this gap up here at eleven dollars I know that doesn't sound like a lot of money but this trade in just one day based on the cover call option paid like ten percent so that and that was at um, uh, a full full a value not at, at an on a margin account so uh, this was a really really cool trade so yeah I love using gaps in concert with option strategy so mm -hmm. great point there so yeah if I know my trend is you know, that's one of the ways that that I will trade gaps in terms of these ones that are starting to do that that parabolic rocket ship rally uh, you know a, a debit a debit spread or you know a cover call spread that is a really good way to trade those yep um, all, all sorts of great strategies out there I just want to throw that out there so people don't feel like they have to trade the underliers uh, two quick questions here Nick you actually made a great comment you said what about the guy who bought PLL at 55 yeah somebody bought that thing at fifty four dollars <laughs> and fifty cents you know I got the chart up over here I mean you know, part of me feels for him but then again you know, this is a this is a business. You got to look at it and go. Am I going to buy something that four days well, uh, oh, two weeks ago was trading at six dollars? It's now at fifty four dollars and fifty cents. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry if you bought that. You're kind of an idiot, right? You're chasing something. Why would you? Why would you do that? You know, you're, you, this is just people right. FOMO, fear of missing out. So, you know, part of me feels bad for that person, but then the other side of me is like, where's your risk management? You shouldn't have been doing that anyway. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. Baldhead B says, John, can you show how to pull the gap and go from bar chart again? So you've got bar chart up there. Um, you were using a gap and go. Um, or is that a correct custom made yeah, filter? Me, uh, yeah, yeah, that was um, just a chart that I created for oh, okay. for my webinar um, uh, yesterday. I did I did a whole webinar yesterday on gaps, and that's kind of a really good time for me to show this to you. This the uh, blatant plug. <laughs> oh, so that's what, so we got so we get sloppy seconds. So that's what's going on. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> so here's barchart.com. Uh, you go into the tools section, and but here's the great thing, Marlon. It, it, they're free. The webinars are free. And um, a ton of them there. Oh, you, futures risk management techniques next Wednesday at noon. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. But here it is: using gaps to affirm your trend analysis, right? And so you can go in there and watch it. Now, um, if you want to become a, a member of Bar Chart, you know they do give you a break. You can try out the Bar Chart for 30 days, uh, and then after the 30-day process. You you know you can sign up now you know for a year subscription it's it's less than you know a month of Starbucks visit so it's it's well, well worth it and a lot of the premium uh, tools um, are great tools for uh, for traders option screeners again that cover call one was in there on that Devon Energy uh, you know how I can create a portfolio uh, advanced stock screening tools. Um, uh, you get uh, access to a lot of their top stop stock picks. So there's a lot of resources uh, in there. But you know the webinars are free, and uh, you don't need to be a member of uh, Bar Chart to watch them. But I would suggest that you know of all these uh, services that are out there, this is probably one of the cheapest, and you get access to me <laughs> <laughs> oh if I do say so myself <laughs> yeah um, exactly yeah. let's see uh, one other question came through from Patrick says John you must use EMAs to confluence with your gaps I, I guess he's asking are you using any sort of indicator to help with those gaps as well um so yeah I think if you go back to, let's see let's go back to my charts here and so, uh, I, if I'm trading futures markets, I might be using exponential moving averages, the EMAs, but um, I, I'm more of a moving averages because they are lagging indicators. I, yep. I kind of just want them to confirm things. So, some of the lagging indicators that I like um, for equities, I like the 20-day uh, versus the 100-day, and, and when the 20-day gets over the 100 or if price stays above. Uh, those two that's kind of confirming that uh, trend uh, for futures markets I use the 9 and 18 so okay. there you go my friend so and let's look and see what's happening here on this um, 
right? And then this is what I'm talking about here. We had our 20-day moving average that was trending down. Here's our downtrend. Here's our gap that signaled that there could be a new trend. And, and then we got the crossover, right? And that would be, if you were going to use moving average, that would have given you the confidence that any demand zone or, or how you would define going long for this trend would have given you confidence uh, to it. Now, the other thing that I do like is when price reverts back inside of the range between the 20 and the 100, uh, I kind of call that the killing zone. I love to find an area to enter the market as long as price stays above that 100-day moving average in equities. And certainly this gap fill was where price dipped below my 20-day and then stayed above my 100. And then there's that crossover again. So uh, yeah, great question. Um, uh, that's kind of what I look for. For equities, the 20 versus 100. For futures, uh, the 9 versus the 18. All right, last one, John, and we'll wrap it up. Medic Man Down came in near the end of the show today, and he says, John, what time frame are you using to get the get in the gap trade? Uh, for example, the lower time frame, four hour or one hour for entry? So again, equities, I'm going to stay in the dailies um, and trust them because I'm, you know, when I trade equities, I'm not in it for, you know, an hour, two hours, or three hours. I'm in it for, I'm trying to catch these kind of moves, right, you know, you know, weeks or months moves. That so I'll stay in dailies. Uh, but for futures markets, you know, I, I like to look at multiple time frame analysis. Um, you know, I might go as low as you know, 15 to 30 minutes for my lower time frame analysis. But um, you know, probably 60 minutes. I I, I like 60 minutes because I can time it with the openings and closings of the market. Um, and then, you know, for the higher level of a hour time for a future market, it's maybe like a 480, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, something like that, you know, would represent, you know, one regular trading session. But who was the uh, who asked that question? Uh, that was her Medic Man down. All right, Medic Man, barchart.com, free videos. There you go. Let's see, where is it? So there it is. It's Bartchart.com forward slash. Oh, what's that? What's that? Bartchart.com forward slash education forward slash webinars, where you guys can find all those webinars. And how to trade multiple time frame analysis, and I I go into that. So yeah, for futures markets, you know, one hour, three hours, four hours, you know, you know, for currencies maybe you know four eighties. Um, I, I try to stay away of those micro time frames. I just feel like. You get chopped up down there, so yeah. you know. Yeah, I um, you know, and just to, for clarification, the question that came through uh, earlier talking about the different time frames for medic, which is like four hours or one hour. Keep in mind it, that's just to enter into the trade. I think that's what medic's getting at here. So I don't want that to confuse any other people. Generally, these gaps, or you're going to see them on the daily, is really pronounced. If you're seeing gaps on a five minute or four hour or an hourly chart. You got a problem. You probably shouldn't be trading that because usually that's going to be a very thinly traded or illiquid security. So a gap should be visible on the daily, but not on a smaller time frame. Right. Again, the difference between equities and futures, right? But in the futures markets, if you can find, well, again, let me show that. Whoop, that's not it. And by the way, guys, I put it in that you can see on his uh, lower third underneath his name there. That's the where you get to those webinars. Barchard.com forward slash cool. education forward slash webinars. So again, here's an hourly chart, right? And well-developed candles. You don't see a lot of gaps, right? But here is an inside gap. There's a gap. Remember, I said in futures markets, if we see a gap, because we can trade them, you know, all day practically, that, that there's a significant story. And this gap, you know, again, came at the opening of the regular trading hour. So that's kind of where I'm looking for those gaps that are, you know, in the early morning sessions or the gaps that come you know, at the end around when the close is established, not the end of trading day, but the close for stock market, four o'clock for crude oil, you know, 2.30 Eastern time for, you know, metals, you know, what is it, 12.30 or one o'clock ish, uh, you know, for grains, you know, all of them have different closing times. And that's where I'm going to look for those inside gaps. Nice. 
All right, John, I'm going to wrap this one up here. We could keep going and going, but I want to save some stuff for our next time we get you on the program. Uh, guys, this was John Rowland. I'll put the lower third on here so you guys can see. He's uh, with barchart.com. Uh, if you go to that address, and for the podcasters out there, I'll read it. It's barchart.com forward slash education forward slash webinars. He's got a ton of free webinars that he does. Um, I did one on GAPS the other day, and he's got a whole bunch of great free education out there for you guys. So uh, check that out at barchart.com. John, thank you for coming on today. I appreciate it. And next time, I think we need to go back and revisit some natural gas or crude oil. Actually, I'd love to get your take on crude oil next time we have you on because it has just gone into boredomville. It was so exciting back in April when you you were on talking about it. Now it's just like it's, it's like fest. it's like Godfather. You always suck me in. I right? bring me back. Right? <laughs> yeah, I think you, the problem with crude oil now is that we need some kind of fundamental change, either. You know the economic upturn around the globe. You know post COVID or you know a collapse of the oil patch. And I don't see either one of those happening oh, yeah. in the short term. So I think you know crude oil is probably in the stall for a while. But natural gas is coming into the winter season, and uh, it certainly has been uh, quite exciting over the last few uh, few trading days. I mean, it's had some big big swings in a very short period of time. So. Um, if you are looking for some price action and you like trading energies, yeah, I think natural gas is is coming into that season. All right. Well, we'll bring you on so we can dive deeper into it. We won't go, we'll go into detail now. John, thanks so uh, much. Yeah. Uh, I hope you have a, a good, a great remainder of your trading week. Thanks for coming on, my friend, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for having me, Merlin. Good luck and best of all trading to you. Uh, you too. Guys, that was John Rowland, a longtime floor trader, giving us some insights into gaps on today's show. But as I mentioned, he's got a ton of free webinars that he's done in the past. Those are archives. You guys can find those at stockcharts.com. Uh, forward slash education, forward slash webinars was the location for that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. Uh, he's always got a tremendous amount of experience. And like I mentioned, I'll be talking with Bob Dunn and Bill Henry. We're also floor traders about some stories from the floor next week. That's going to be on Tuesday. I believe that's at 4 p.m. Pacific time. I'm pretty sure that's the time that that will be. All right. Uh, I want to make sure that I can finish the show. There was something noteworthy today because America, America, we like to spend, right? And I, I talk to people about their personal finances and the goal should be always that your income exceeds your expenses. And that has been happening for the U.S. We've actually been doing well because expenses have been way down. But look at the latest numbers that came out today. If you notice here, personal income dropped by 2.7%. It was actually increasing in the previous month it's dropped by 2.7%. So people are making less money. <clears throat> Thank you, unemployment benefits. Anyway, we'll go let down here lower. And now let's go to uh, where, where personal spending is up at the top. So personal spending is actually increasing and personal income is going down. That's how people get into bankruptcy and that may lead to more problems down the road. We also had construction spending numbers come out today which were really good at 1.4% gain. Of course, it's that time of year, uh, getting tail into summer, people are building quickly before the winter hits. Now. Um, yeah, thanks Patrick. Merlin, living within your means is boring. Yes, I know somebody else who talks the same way. Uh, if you look at the September, or sorry, October 2nd calendar, this is what's happening for Friday. Again, it's a really heavy U.S. day tomorrow. Look at all this stuff we've got. The major piece is going to be your unemployment rate that's in the middle of the screen there. 8.2% is the expectation versus 8.4% is what we had previous month. So people feeling comfortable that those unemployment numbers are going to drop. But let's not kid ourselves. We had Disney talking about $28,000, uh, 28000 dollars 20,000 layoffs. You also have um, United Airlines, American Airlines, and other airlines totaling about $50,000. I keep saying that 50,000 jobs being cut here soon. So we could all of a sudden see this number start to tick back up here with regards to the unemployment rate. You also have consumer sentiment, factory orders, and a busy, busy day for America tomorrow. Europe has a couple announcements here. Not really that important with the Spanish unemployment change. Sorry for my Spaniard friends, but it's not the major driver of the European economy. You do have a CPI estimate coming out for the euro as well tomorrow, and that will be your major economic news. All right, uh, for tomorrow's show, I don't have a guest. I'm going to do all listener questions. So do me a favor. If you guys want me to cover something, talk about a specific question, send those on in at tradermerlin.com. You can just go to tradermerlin.com or email me at tradermerlin at gmail.com. Either way, you can send me to Trader Merlin on Twitter, Trader Merlin on Facebook. We're in Trader Merlin somewhere. If you like today's show, like John Roland, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up, and of course, leave comments and questions down below the video. Don't worry, I remove all the porn and spam ads that people like to put down below the video, so that will all be clean for everybody else. That's going to do it for me today, everybody. Hope you have a fantastic Friday session. I'll see you tomorrow.